The time has come to complete step five of the Survivor Stories Research Project, and that step is designing the website. On the MyBig Campus page, you will find some guidelines for how to design your website. Those of you that recall the News Reading Project will remember how to use Google Sites. And Google Sites is an easy tool to create a very basic website. As you look at the MyBig Campus details, you'll find a number of rules and requirements for what you must post on that website. But let's take a look at the basic layout. This is the type of framework that you will receive sent to you in your Google account. It contains a home page, a page about the challenge, a page about your survivor, a page for discussion, and a page for links. You don't need to delete or add any pages. These are the five pages you need. And as you go from one page to the next, you'll see that there are some brief instructions on how to complete the pages. You will also find a model example on my big campus. That model example should be finished by the time you watch this video, but I will start it right now. When I look in my Google Sites account, I will find a website that says Clarkson Survivor Project. You will find one that has your last name and Survivor Project. You must first change this title. As you go to Manage Site up here in the gear, you will see that you have the ability to change the title of the website. I will change my t title to The Story of Mark Fucuriel. Use that same title, obviously, with your survivor's name inserted. Click Save and go back to your main page. Now you can see that this is a site about your survivor and it doesn't have your name as the title. And you're ready to start. Take a look at all the basic instructions. Here you should add a picture. Here you should add a brief summary. Here you should put your first and last name and period number. So let's think about how we do each one of these tasks. Don't forget to click on the Edit Page button up here at the top right. First, I want to add a positive picture here. How can I do that? Well. If you've been keeping up with your Digo list, you should have a number of links that are images. As you can see on my Digo list, I have 28 items, and 11 of them are images. So I'll click on images, so I'm only looking at the images. I click expand so I can see some of the descriptions of these images. I must find one that's positive, so I think that I will use this one. This was an excellent picture of Fucuril and his son after he has recovered. I'll take this and place it in my website. And it's easy as clicking and dragging. Of course, this image is huge. I picked a high resolution image because I wanted something that was clear. I can make that image small. I can make that image medium. I can make that image large. It looks like large is just fine. I can also center it. Centering it makes it look a little bit better. So now that I've done that, I can delete, add a positive picture here. For every picture, make sure to include a caption. So the caption below this picture could be Mark Fucuriel and his son Gavin enjoy a moment celebrating their recovery from the bombings. I'll center that. Click Save. And you may wish to save often. Don't forget that Google Sites does not auto-save in the same way that Google Drive does. Now I can change or edit the page again. Go down here. And there I go. A brief summary text should briefly explain what this website is about. So I can type something like this.
I'll probably add a little bit more and I might even change the font. I'll probably want to make this font larger. A little bit easier to read. This is the home page after all and I want my readers, my visitors, to easily be able to see what the site is about. So once I've done this and I save, I have the basic information necessary on the home page. And I can continue to develop. Let's go to challenge. In the challenge, I want to make sure to change the title of this to the actual challenge itself. So you may actually call it breast cancer or September 11th terrorist attacks or the Holocaust. Whatever your particular challenge is, make sure to change that name. Then you want to copy and paste your background paper here, but without the in-text citations or works cited information. I have my background paper. I'll copy this text. Paste it in. Now I'm not sure that I like that font all that much, so I might change it just a little bit. 16 point font, normal. Actually, that's not bad. However, I think I'll make this, let's see. What I can do is start from scratch if I wish. I can go to format and clear the formatting. And that makes it basic. It makes it default. And actually the default formatting doesn't look bad. What I can do now is go back throughout and delete my in-text citations. This of course will take just a moment. but not very long. Okay, good enough. Looks pretty good. Now I must paste two or three pictures or videos here. So let me go back see if I can find, okay, image of the immediate aftermath of the bombing, image of people with the bombing hugging each other, image of a victim being lifted onto a gurney. I'll go here, pick up this, put it right there. Once again, I can change it. And I think I'm going to leave it left justified right here. And, of course, I want a caption. The immediate aftermath of the bombings. Press enter. I'll need another image. And let's see which one. Take this one out. I think we have bombings, and then we have a victim being lifted onto a gurney. That might be effective. I will also want this image of people hugging each other. And that one's taking a little bit of time to load, so let me try it again. Interesting. Well, I'll pick this one up. Place it right there. Make it large. Victims in the aftermath. 
Now I must also include a video. And I can include a video pretty easily. If you go to the insert menu, you'll find an ability to insert a YouTube video. Now you might think that, well, YouTube is blocked, so I'm not sure how I can do that from school. You may not be able to insert all videos from school. However, YouTube is an enormously effective way to insert videos, so you may wish to do some of this at home. But you can use My Big Campus to get through the web filter here at school. My Big Campus has a library. It's located in the sidebar over here to the left. If you search the library for your topic, you may find a video that you'd like. Austin Marathon. I search. And let's see what it pulls up. It's kind of taking a moment. Take a look at my page. Looks good. It's almost there. Here we go. So, videos of explosions at the Boston Marathon. That looks good. I believe this is a CNN video showing these explosions. So, I'll pull this video. You may be able to find the video that you'd like through My Big Campus. And if you can, I'll show you how you can use this to still use the YouTube utility to paste the video in. Again, it is taking its time. I apologize for that. Let's go back here, take a look at what we've got, clean out my tabs a little bit. I'm going to save. I do apologize for that little pause, but I believe I'm up and ready now. So, my page is saved. I'm talking about the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. I have my text, I have a couple of images, and I'm trying to import this video. So, here's the video of the Boston Marathon bombings from CNN. Notice that it's originally housed on YouTube, but of course, if you're at school, you can't watch it on YouTube. But here's what you can do. Right here is a share button. If you click the share button, you'll find the URL for the video on YouTube. Copy it using Control C. Go back to your website. Go into edit mode. And place your cursor where you want that video to be. I think I want it to be at the top. So I'm going to do that right there. Go to insert YouTube. Paste the URL. My title will be CNN Report on the Bombings. And click Save. Now there's my video. It's a little bit big. I might want to change the size a little bit, just so it's just like the others. I can make a custom size. Let's try 400 by 200. Click Save. And it looks now like it's about the same size. A caption. This is a CNN report featuring footage of the bombings. Save. Now you may not be able to watch this video once it's embedded at school, but you will be able to see it at home. So check it there as well. And if you press play. All right, and uh, we are looking obviously at scenes. This is right uh, during one of the. You can also pull this out, your viewer can. And look at this. So now you have embedded video, which is pretty easy using the insert button. So notice that the title over here has changed 2013 Boston Marathon Bombings because I changed the title here. Let's go to the survivor. I'll do the survivor in much the same way, but notice the instructions. 
Add the text of the first two answers in the survivor story here. Keep the questions, but delete the in-text citations and works cited information. Take a look at the finished model example for, for guidance. Here, you will paste pictures and videos as well. The discussion page is just that. You should invite your visitors to discuss the survivor here and paste a picture or video here. Notice that the comment button is turned on on this page. Finally, links. Create no fewer than six links connected to the topic here. Follow the format below. Let me show you how to do this. I'll delete this. I don't need the instructions. Title of resource, make the title a hyperlink and summary of resource. I'll go to my Digo list. I want to see all of the items, so I don't need to see images, just images anymore. I will pick this NBC News article. Last Boston Marathon survivor leaves hospital 100 days after bombing. Now, I'll copy the URL. Go back here. If I select this, I click the little link button up there. Paste that in. Oh, as a web address, sorry. Paste it in. Open this link in a new window. That'll make life easier. Click OK. That's good. Now, a summary of resource. This is a news article that tells story of Mark Fukuriel hospital stay. Click save. And this link works. It redirects me straight to that NBC news article. So before I leave, let's do one more thing. Let's say you're here and you want to change the title of this page also to the name of your survivor, Mark Fukuriel. Let's say I wanted some video in there and I want to pull it from YouTube. Well, that's very easy. Here's a video that I found about Fukuriel. This is a good video. And I can find the ability to share in this way. Look, there's my URL. I'll copy it. And I'll go back to my website. Once again, insert YouTube that I don't think I want a title on this one. Custom. This is a smaller space. So I might do 300 by 150. Save. 300 by 150 turned out pretty big. I'll try this again. Hmm, doesn't seem to want to go down that small. little smaller. That was when I save. Well, looks like that's not going to work. It'll spill over into the text. I'll make a change. And I'll make a change to this template as well. So, instead of having three columns like this, I will have two columns. And I will take this. Take that out, add the text of the answers in the survivor story here. Keep the questions, but delete in-text citations. There we go. 
Now, if I take a look at it, it looks good. I have video. This is basically all you need to do. Now, you can go into the settings and change colors and other designs. Remember not to detract at all from the visibility, readability, or formality of the project. Make sure that everything looks serious. Take a look also at the model example that will provide you with directions throughout the entire process. The rubric will also provide you with guidance on how you will be graded. Pay attention to all of those instructions and your website will be just fantastic. Don't forget to ask questions as you run into trouble.